Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to check out the new Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. This is the successor to the Beacon HD. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at what comes in the box with this extender. We'll compare it to the Beacon HD and then we'll get it adopted into our Unify controller. There are some requirements to be able to run this as it is a wireless uplinking device. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have a new Ubiquity affiliate link and I'll put that in the description below. So as always, let's take a look at what comes in the box with the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender, and then we'll get it adopted into Unify. And here's the box for the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. On the side, we could see that it says extender, and then it has the branding for the Unify 6. On the inside, the first thing we have is the extender, and we do have that branding that says Unify 6, which tells us that this is a Wi-Fi 6 device. The only thing that's on the back is where we plug this into power, and this will take up a full receptacle. Also on the inside, there's a piece of plastic that we need to take off. And on the bottom of the extender, this is where we have a reset button. And on the side, this is where our LEDs will be. Since there's a chip shortage, this will only be white or blue. With the Beacon HD, we could do RGB, which is shown here. On the inside of the box, we have this Wi-Fi 6 extender quick start QR code. We have an optional wall plate. And then we have some rubber feet. I guess this would be to use to push it out from your wall a little bit if needed. And that's it that comes in the box. There's not too much to this. Now side by side, I have the new Wi-Fi 6 extender and I have the Beacon HD. And we really can't tell which one's which besides this one that says U6. They are the same dimensions at 6.68 inches by 4.42 by 1.27. With the Beacon HD, they also released a bunch of different cover plates where you could do wood, cement, and maybe black and a few other colors. So these will fit over top of the Wi-Fi 6 extender if you wanna have that type of finish. Now let's go back to the computer. We'll look at some of the specs and then get this adopted into Unify. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender. This features dual band Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. And on the five gigahertz band, we have four by four, multi-user MIMO and OFDMA, and we could go up to 4.8 gigabits per second. On the 2.4 gigahertz, we have two by two multi-user MIMO and OFDMA, and we could do 573.5 megabits per second. It fits any standard US duplex wall outlet, and they say it easily extends Wi-Fi coverage across large homes or offices. There's also a couple of requirements for the wireless adoption of the U6 extender. APs providing wireless connectivity for the U6 extender must be updated to version 6.0.11. On the UDMs, we must be on 1.12.22 and the UDR 2.3.15. And it needs to be managed in Unify Network Controller of at least 6.5.55. The Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender is $149 USD MSRP. This is about $20 more expensive than the Beacon HD. Installation of the Access Point Wi-Fi 6 extender is very easy. All we need to do is grab the extender and plug it into a wall outlet. We will see a white light blinking and that means that it is ready to be adopted into Unify. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we adopt the extender into Unify, why would we want to use an extender? Well, the only reason I would use an extender is if I couldn't get a physical cable to an access point. It's always better to physically cable in your access points, but in most homes that are already finished, it is very tricky to get a Cat5 or Cat6 cable through the walls. Also, to get the extender adopted into our Unify controller, we must have wireless meshing enabled. If we don't have it enabled, we will never be able to get it into our controller. And to find wireless meshing, we go to settings, and then under Wi-Fi, we just scroll down. Under AP site settings, we could see wireless meshing, and it's enabled. We'll go back to my devices. We'll click on the U6 extender, and then I'm gonna press adopt device. Now we can see the U6 extender in our Unify network controller, and it is requiring a firmware update. So it's gonna be updating from 6.0.15 to 6.2.16. Let's press confirm. The U6 extender is now updated. Let's take a look at some of the settings. So like every other Unify access point, it's gonna show us our model, our MAC address, our IP, and the firmware version that it's on. And then we have our history, which won't show anything because this is a brand new device. Under general, we can see our uptime, memory usage, load average, and then our Wi-Fi memberships. So this is taking all my Wi-Fi SSIDs, and we can see that it's a part of the AP group 
all APs. Now we have this uplink wireless, and this is gonna tell us where it is doing a wireless uplink to. And we could see that it's going to my U6 in wall. We can see the signal strength is minus 51 dBm. The transmit rate is 1.73, and the receive rate is 1.44 gigabits per second. The interface is bugging out a little bit for the down packets, up packets, and the activity. We take a look at our air stats. That's everything that's happening on this access point, the channel, the transmit power, so on and so forth. There's downlinks, which we don't have any downlinks. We have our AP group, and then we have our WLANs. So this is all of our Wi-Fi SSIDs. If we look under insights, we could see the channel usage, and this will show us our RX frames or TX frames and the interference, which there is very minimal interference right now. And it also does the traffic identification, which there really hasn't been any, it's just showing SSL. And then under our settings, we could change the device name, and currently this extender is using the global AP settings. We have our radios, the 2.4, and then we have our 5. If we deselect use global AP settings, this is where we can manually set them. Under five gigahertz radio, the channel width is missing from it. Under band steering, we could either have this off or we could prefer the five gigahertz or have it balanced. And under the LED, it does look like we have those RGB settings. I'm gonna to try to switch it and see if it works. After looking at the extender, it did change color. So in my access point, it does have RGB, but it may vary between access point to access point. We could see right on their webpage that they say, note, due to chip supply shortages, the U6 AP LEDs have been limited to only white and blue color mode. So some people may get RGB and some people may not. You'll just have to check when you get these extenders. Now let's take a look at the results. For the Wi-Fi 6 extender in my office, the download was was 225 and the upload was 240. For the Beacon HD, it was 220 by 161. So the Wi-Fi 6 extender actually did beat out the Beacon HD for every single one of these tests. On the main floor on the Wi-Fi 6 extender, I was getting 275 by 182 and the Beacon HD 220 by 154. And in the basement for the Wi-Fi 6 extender, I was getting 271 by 165 and the Beacon HD 203 by 118. Same goes for the iPerf test, even though they were pretty close. In my office for the Wi-Fi 6, we were getting 138 by 93 and the Beacon HD 135 by 90. For the main floor, I was getting 153 by 231 for the Wi-Fi 6 and the Beacon HD, I was getting 151 by 170. And in the basement, I was getting 130 down and 140 up for the Wi-Fi 6 and the Beacon HD, I was getting 122 by 96. The Wi-Fi 6 extender and the Beacon HD were just on their default settings. I didn't switch anything. But as you can see, the Wi-Fi 6 extender did beat it by a little bit. Wi-Fi 6 is meant for more high density and for more clients to connect to it. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, what are my thoughts on the Wi-Fi 6 extender? Well, I think it's great if you have a dead zone in your house and you can't physically get a cable to it. Like I said, if you can run a cable, I would do that and just place a normal access point. These are just meant if you can't place a cable. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.